Dream Crete. Yeah, this is another video about Dream Crete. We're gonna talk about shrinkage. We're gonna talk about freeze thaw. We're gonna talk about aggregate failures. This is a video about how you can get great concrete, also known as Dream Crete. Now let's talk about shrinkage. Shrinkage can often lead to cracking, and there's a very simple, elegant way to handle this. You minimize the paste content. If you don't know what paste is, it is the volume of cement and the volume of water and maybe um, other cementitious materials in your mixture. And if you can keep that number to be less than 25% by volume for slip forming, that is amazing. If you can keep it less than 27% by volume for flowable concrete, that is amazing. It's very simple to calculate. Just use the volume check out and see if the sum of these things is less than 25 or 27 percent and that is a great 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 way to make yourself some low cracking concrete or you can measure yourself the shrinkage you can make bars like this measured over time a, a specification limit that's been picked in that pem document i showed you before is 420 micro strains at 28 days but what if you have problems with shrinkage well reduce your paste content of course that's pretty simple you can change your coarse aggregates. Some are stiffer than others, and you can use something called a shrinkage reducing admixture, which eventually, I need to make a video about that. I've got some pretty cool data about it. As you add it, it causes your concrete to shrink less. Now let's talk about cold weather resistance, and there's typically two of them, freezing and thawing resistance and calcium oxychloride. Let's start out with our freezing and thawing friends, and this is truly about air in the concrete. It's not only air, but the simplest way to control this and make sure this is right is to get the air content right. I'm showing two air void systems on the left and right. Both of them have the same volume of air, but they have very different freeze thaw performance. You would much, much rather have the one on the right. Why? Because we want small, well-distributed bubble systems of air inside of our concrete. Why? Because if I'm a water molecule and I go to freeze, there's only a certain distance that I can travel before I reach a bubble, before I'll cause cracking. So this orange here is something called the protected paste concept. We get much more protection out of the stuff in orange than um, that, the airwood system on the right than we do out of the one on the left. That's why we want small, well-distributed bubbles and the air volume is not enough. Got a video about that if you want to check it out. Now, the super air meter is your best bet to do this because it can measure all this information in the fresh concrete. So you can change it, you can tweak it, and you can get it right. It, it will measure your air volume and it will measure your SAM number in 10 minutes or less. And it, this SAM number is gonna correlate with freeze thaw durability. It's also gonna correlate with that bubble spacing that I showed you about before. Tons and tons of videos on my channel about this. But just some data here. I'm showing air content on the x-axis. I'm showing durability factor or performance in the freeze thaw test on the y-axis. And then this number right here, this is the good stuff above it. This is the not so good stuff below it. And look, look, look. Here's one at 7% air, which meets a lot of specifications that's not performing well. Here's some at 5% air that meets a lot of specifications that's not performing well. This is why air volume is not enough. But if instead we change and we plot durability factor on the y-axis versus SAM number, that is much more in tune with bubble spacing, then everything lines up much better. You have the large majority of the data up here, and down here, and you're, as the SAM number goes up, when it gets to about 0.32, you hit what's called the cliff of doom. The cliff of doom is when your concrete's gonna fail in freeze thaw durability, and it's very, very clear where the cliff of doom is here with the SAM number. It is not so clear if it's just using the air volume. You can find more information about the super air meter here at this website, and so go check that out. But what if there are problems? Well, you can increase your air content. Even if your SAM number is low, even if something else is going on, increase your air content is the one thing you can do in the field. You can change the type of admixtures because they often sometimes don't play well together. You can use longer mixing times. Um, these are all tools that, that are helpful, and I'm going to make a video about this coming up. There's another thing we have to watch out for called calcium oxychloride formation. And this has an AASHTO test method out there where you can use something called a low temperature differential scanning calorimeter. 
to actually measure the performance and see the potential of these materials and see if they'll have calcium oxychloride or not. But there is a recent paper that my group published with Dr. Weiss's group where we just said, guess what? If you have about 30% SCM in the mixture with 6% air content, you're gonna be good. If you don't have that air content that high, you may need 35% SCM to make this be passable. You can check that paper out if you wanna learn more. I'll give more information in the notes below. The last thing we're gonna talk about here, next to last thing, pardon me, is aggregate durability. There is aggregate, alkali aggregate reaction can be a problem. There's something called decracking with alkali re aggregate reaction. There is a massive document, massive, great, amazing guide out there that tells you the steps, the tricks, how to make sure that you do not have yourself alkali aggregate reaction problems, and then decracking. That's when it's an aggregate issue that usually is causing freeze-thaw problems. There are local freeze-thaw tests that a lot of different DOTs have out there, and then something called the Iowa Pore Index Test that is also useful as probably the most widely used local state method that people use to check their course aggregates out if you're worried about that. And the last, but probably least category is called strength. And strength, we usually use cylinders or we use beams. I have the or underlined here because we don't usually need both of them. Usually you only pick one. Now there are people out there that say, well, which one should I pick? Some think that when it comes to structural concrete, it should be more cylinders. Some think when it comes to paving concrete, it should be more beams. I'll give you a secret. Both of these tests, both of them, are controlled by the tensile strength of concrete. And typically, they are very, very comparable to one another. If you don't believe me, here's a recent project that um, I completed with some friends out of Wisconsin where we compared a large number of jobs where we compared the compressive strength on the x-axis and the flexural strength of the modules of rupture on the y-axis. And with this equation, which is a little bit different equation that's been published before, but with this equation out there, they agree beautifully. Beautifully, beautifully, be beautifully, you can find other FHWA data that's used this equation in other applications and other projects. There are a few that are a little bit different, and there's pretty good reasons to explain that. They usually have to do with aggregates. So what if there are problems with strength? Well, the number one thing you can do is decrease your water cement ratio. You can wash your aggregates to make sure they're clean. You can examine your coarse aggregates to make sure there's not any um, dilatorious materials there that are causing you to have low strengths. Thank you for watching this video. Again, like, subscribe, leave me a comment below. You know you're a freak like me. Please check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Concrete.Tyler. Take care, everybody.